You can be seated. God, everybody's crying. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Whew. Well, on behalf of Michael and Amanda and their families, I just want to welcome everyone and thank you all for being here. For those who don't know me, my name's Devin, and for the past four years, I've been so, so lucky to be friends with these two. Um, and they've been such dedicated friends to my wife, Isabel, and I, and have made such a singular impact on our lives. So I'm really honored to stand up here with you today, and uh, hope you don't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> How incredible is it to be here? We're, <laughs> we're physically together with so many people who love each other, and most importantly, who love Michael and Amanda. Um, and we're all here to show our support for your love and for the commitment that you're going to make here today. Um, for those who have been fortunate to live through this past year, today we get to participate in one of the most special parts about being alive, and that is to celebrate the love of two beautiful people and to witness the start of a new family. With this past year in mind, Michael and Amanda have asked that we start with a moment of silence for reflection, meditation, prayer, uh, just to honor everyone whose lives have been devastated by the pandemic this year. So if you could join me in silence now. Thank you. Michael and Amanda also want to send their love to all their family and friends who are joining virtually. Uh, special mention goes out to Amanda's grandmother, Alice, Michael's family in England, his mom, Pamela, stepdad, Edward, his brother, Hugo, his sister, Fran, English granny, and the Roach family. And I personally want to give a very, very special mention to Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> So with that, Michael and Amanda, are y'all ready? I'm yes. ready. I'm definitely okay, ready. Okay, just in, in case you need a reminder or you're feeling a little out of body, like you're at your wedding right now, so <laughs> take a sec, take a deep breath, be oh as present God. as you possibly can be, yeah. um, and look at each other. Let's begin. So we're going to start with the reading from 1 Corinthians 13, The Way of Love. If I speak in the tongues of men... And of angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I'm nothing. If I give away all I have and I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they'll pass away. As for tongues, they'll cease. As for knowledge, it'll pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. You know, as I read that just now, as I've been reading it like throughout the past couple weeks, um, there's a few things that keep popping out that remind me of you two. The first is when it says, love bears all things, believes in all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. 
And I just can't help but think, wow, Amanda must really love Michael because she endures a lot. (laughs) (laughs) The second thing is when he says, when I was a child, I spoke, thought, reasoned like a child. But when I became a man or a woman, I put aside childish ways. And it reminds me of the conversation we had at our house a couple weeks ago as we were getting ready for today. You told me the story of your relationship, and I think this is the perfect moment to remind you of it. (laughs) Oh, God. You two met when you were 20, Amanda, and you were 22, Michael. And in many ways, you were both still children. I love how you both described it. It seemed like for six months, fate just kept throwing you together over and over and over until something stuck. And eventually... It did. Amanda, you caved. You agreed to a date with the guy who looked in the mirror too much. (laughs) But even then, Amanda, you had this feeling you couldn't explain that just you were going to end up with this guy. Um, You told me about your first date at Peter Pan Putt-Putt Golf. The first time you both told each other I love you, which for Michael was three weeks after Putt-Putt Golf. (laughs) He was convinced. It took Amanda a little more convincing, but she did. (laughs) You told me about the ups and downs over the years, how you two have been able to come through really hard challenges as you've learned how to love each other and how to stick by each other. I think one of the most important things that's gotten you through to where you are now, you have this amazing, wonderful life together, is your ability to have productive conflict. Not even your ability, but your commitment to have productive conflict. That's real life. That's real love. You guys compare it to a forest fire. Uh, (laughs) Not only because it can be intense, but because it's nature's way to periodically clear out the dead wood that builds up. And in the process, the soil of your love becomes fertilized and nourished and refreshed. And space is created for new growth. I think that's such a helpful image, especially because it also points to the skill that's required to contain the fire. And that's only one through practice and experience and maturity. As you matured in your relationship, you both matured as individuals. Um, You met as children, and you've grown into adults together. And you've been molded, most of all, by each other's fingerprints on your hearts, in your minds, in your souls. You've actually shaped each other into becoming someone that the other person can trust enough to commit their life to. It's amazing. So that's why I think of you when I read, when I was a child, I spoke, thought, reasoned like a child, but when I became a man and a woman, I put aside childish ways. Because it speaks to that process of maturity in your long relationship that's only going to continue. As I've heard from happily married people, the best really is yet to come. So as we move toward the exchange of vows and of rings, I want to leave you with this. We've heard a lot about love today, how it's patient and kind, how it hopes and believes and endures, how it makes everything else in our lives worth anything at all. But it's so hard to pin down what love is. And I'm certainly not going to try because, actually, I think, Michael, you've done a pretty good job of it. (laughs) I've always been really touched by how you describe your love for Amanda. And you say, she's home. She's She's my home. Yeah. I think that's about as true as it gets. Just like a home, it's not found as much as it's built. You stand here today about to say your vows because with the support and the, the... the, the support of all these people here, the good influence, that's what I was trying to say, of all these people, you decided to keep showing up and putting in the work. You decided to stay in when it was hard. When something had to change, you decided to change. You decided to be the person who apologized first. You decided to forgive when the other person fell short of who you knew they could be. And these are the things that are going to carry you through to the finish line to keep you growing together. And God willing, these are the things that are going to grow and support your family. No rush, but sugar needs a playmate. (laughs) So at this time, would would you face each other and join hands? Look into each other's eyes. Amanda, 
Do you take Michael to be your husband? I do. Michael, do you take Amanda to be your wife? I do. I have the vows here. She's going to. Yeah. Do I need the mic? That, you're the okay. bottom one. You're the top one. <clears throat> so Michael and Amanda have written their own vows. These are outward expressions to their family and their community of their love and the commitment that's in their hearts. Amanda, would you now pledge your vows to Michael? Yes. Do I need a mic or am I good? Just, you have two. Do you need uh, just tell Michael. <sighs> okay. This is going to be hard. Um, Michael, from the moment I first spotted you from a cross sidebar, um, I felt a pull to you that I've never felt towards another person before. Never did I believe in love at first sight, but I knew immediately that you were meant for me. It was an incredibly surreal experience feeling like fate was pushing me to you. We were so young when we met, and while we've had our fair share of ups and downs, I wouldn't trade a single second of it. I've loved growing with you as individuals and as a couple in the beautiful way we've evolved our lives together throughout these last eight years. Sorry. There are a million things I love about you. You are one of the strongest, most resilient people I've ever known. You've never let life knock you down. And you're such an amazing example of what strength, determination, and positivity can do. I love the way you never fail to make every room you walk into more fun and have subsequently made a million people your best friend. <laughs> I love the way you gesticulate all the time. <laughs> I love what a great dad you are to Sugar, and I can't wait to see you with our kids one day. You're my absolute best friend, and I love living my life with you. I'll take it. <laughs> I promise to support and, and encourage you through whatever life throws our way. I promise to be patient, I promise to always put us first. I promise to make our life full of adventure, beauty, and rich experiences. I promise to be your best friend forever. I love you. I love you, honey. God <laughs> dang it. <laughs> Michael, would you now, <laughs> you now pledge your vows to Amanda? <laughs> Got it, man. All right. <clears throat> Hi, honey. <laughs> That's how I started it. I can't wait for you to be my forever number one, my life partner, my other half. We've been together now for such a long time. You found me as an aimless, naive, fun-seeking puppy dog that <laughs> never knew what it was truly like to have a real home. We fell in love as mere children and have spent many lives together. We've witnessed our love transcend many forms. You always gave me your full heart in spite of my many vulnerabilities and sometimes quite fatal flaws. <laughs> but you gave me your full heart in the best and worst of times. You fed me self-consciousness and maturity. You gave my life weight. You gave my life meaning. You are every bit the backbone and driving force of the man I am today. You gave me the home and will give me the family I've always dreamed of. I owe you everything. Amanda Christina Romero. <laughs> I offer myself to you as a partner in life. I vow to love you in sickness and health. I commit myself to encourage you in the good times and the bad. I will cherish and respect you all the days of our life together. I give thanks many times over that I have found you. May our marriage be a gift to the world and our families, as your love is a gift to me. David, would you present the rings? <laughs> I'll take them. All right. 
Do you each take the other's ring? So, Amanda, you take Michael's. These rings are a visible symbol of the promises you've made. They're made of gold, which, like your love, has been purified by many fires. May they always remind you of your commitment and the home you're building together. Amanda, would you place the ring on Michael's finger and repeat? Yeah. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. Michael, would you take Amanda's hand, place this ring on her finger, and repeat, with this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. Michael, Amanda, you have expressed your love and commitment to each other through the exchange of vows and rings in the presence of your family and your friends. You have become more than partners and best friends and dog parents. <laughs> by the power vested in me by the great state of Texas, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let not man separate. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Michael and Amanda Porter. Uh. Michael, you may kiss your bride.